mining. Some of us loathe it in Space Engineers, having to sit for hours grinding our ships against a wall so we can lug it all back to base. Others find it the most rewarding experience in Space Engineers, building new industrial vehicles to help chew through rock and ice and supply our friends with the vital metals they need for the next build or the magnesium for the next magazine. Whether it's an economical single pilot deep space mining craft desperately gathering resources to fix a station on the verge of falling to the Reapers, or a heavy output strip mine on an Earth-like planet consuming hundreds of tons of raw rock. Mining doesn't have to be boring. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Captain Shack, and thank you so much for joining me today as we look at some of the mods I've found throughout the years that help make mining more interesting. So let's get started with the mod that inspired this video, the most recent release that was on the front page from the workshop and should be the thumbnail. We're front loading this baby with one of the coolest mods. Here it is. The North Wind Heavy Equipment. This has got to be the second largest drill that I've ever actually considered putting into any of the maps that I have played. It's literally the reason why I wanted to make this video is it kind of inspired me to look at my, well, my mining collection, my mining mods that I enjoy playing with. And there haven't been that many. And so, yeah, we had to make this collection. So let's go ahead and take a look at this drill. Let's go. Come on, let's go. I absolutely love this badger that I found on the workshop. And I'll pull that up later or I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out this build. Though those wheels, for some reason, are all on rotors. So they kind of fall off real easy. They're not actually on a suspension. But let's get back to the mod in question. Now, this is the model itself. That is not like a rotor setup or the drill bit. The whole thing, all the way up to this platform you can walk around on, up to this point is actually the uh, the drill itself. And it's huge. I'll even pull it up here so you can see how you place it. The bounding box for it is quite large. So it's a little bit hard to place when you want to get it on a, on a smaller rig. And if you're anywhere near the ground trying to place it, it has two connection points on the back. So you can pipe in all that ore that's coming through and give you two points of contact to hold it up. See, I've actually got uh, only one point holding it up at the moment, and it runs to a split T on the reinforced new conveyor system that was added in the last uh, big update. And then it runs to those two ports back there. It does, and I absolutely love this. This is part of the drill itself. You get one of these platforms up here with the safety rails, and then you get a control panel so that you can make your changes and adjustments to it or just flick it off. And there's a lovely, like, slow down. You can actually feel the mass of it. I'll turn it back on, and it'll slowly start speeding back up. And that'll give you an idea of how large the digging sphere of it is, if you look down underneath it. Uh, I love it. I think this is such a cool idea. You, I can see you making, like, either just a surface miner with it, or if somebody really wanted to go crazy, a ground, like, underground tunneler mount for it so they could drive and dig underground. But if you're looking for something huge, this would be what you'd be looking for. Now, here's one thing to keep in mind. You're not gonna be building this right away in a survival uh, because you're gonna need cobalt for it. Everything else is just iron. It's the metal grids that might slow you down. As price goes, this is not the most expensive drill in this mod collection. Speaking of which, let's go, well, look at the most expensive one that some of you will recognize from the New Guys series. Welcome, everybody, to the Three Amigos moon base deep in, well, an unknown star sector where we've been sent to clear out the moon. If you haven't kept up with the New Guys series, I highly recommend you check it out over on the Twitch side of things, Twitch slash Captain Check. Well, if I'm going to show off this particular mining drill, I had to load up this save because it's been kind of a star of one of the ships that have kept us alive. I've been desperately fighting off. Speaking of which, Reavers, that's the sound of pilots, other pilots, NPC pilots in the system, spotting reavers. This right here, though, is the mod in question. Oh, look at it. I've actually had this in my mod list for so long, but I've never, ever, ever sent the time to actually build it. And so Pally Time, MF Pally Time, decided he was going to be the one to do it. And he built a whole ship around the idea of it. And I truly mean around the idea of it. As he built the giant... This is huge. Let me, let me get my character model out so you can see how large this is. Uh, he built... There you go. Yeah, he built his ship around the idea of making it so he could dig the hole large enough in one pass to follow up his entire ship with it. So it is a giant worm. He calls it the flatbed. And it is able to dig the biggest holes that I have freaking seen 
uh, in SE in one go. And I'll show you one of those holes because it's right there, the Pit of Despair and Doom. And I guess sort of our new base of operations. He's actually built and dug two of them with it. He's actually done it to get away from enemies in combat, dug underground with it. If we go inside, I'll go ahead and turn it on for us. So we don't need to go inside. I can just do it from this control panel right here. And we look up drill. This is the Mexpex drill. Uh, this is the Mexpex heavy mining drill. Mexpex has done a ton of different mods over the, well, over the years on Space Engineers, uh, many of which we have used in various series. Uh, oh, look at that. Even got a cool lighting effect right there. Now, it is really expensive. It took us quite a while to make this. And it wasn't because the resources were rare, it's just they're numerous. It took 18,000 steel plates just to get it started, and then another 4,000 to get it beyond just functional and actually have it armored up. That also means it is has a huge health pool. And we have used this uh, almost in combat to whack enemy ships out of the way. You just have to be careful because it's not nearly as durable down that end of the ship versus this front of the ship. But there you go. That's the heavy mining drill by Mexpex. It works just like normal drill. Left click mine, right click will delete large chunks. If he right clicks one of these spheres, you can actually see how big it is. That's how big the mining uh, AOE is when you right click with it. So it's huge. All right, onwards to maybe some more subtle and maybe smaller mining bits and pieces. Oh, one thing that I didn't note is with this drill, it actually has two different sizes of it. So you've got your small XL, and I'll just throw these into my into my bar, and then your normal heavy drill. What's the difference? Well, for one, the heavy drill, which is the one that we've got right here already attached to a ship, is this big. And then the other one is actually slightly smaller and fits on a small it fits on a small grid there here's the small grid right here it fits on a small grid now it is the size of most people's small grids it is freaking huge because imagine how big the ship has to be to mount this thing to it but you could do it you could make a mining ship a small grid mining ship this size if you really really wanted to uh somebody over there is having a fight oh yep we've got reavers all right we better get out of here before the reavers attack So this video isn't going to be about just gigantic mining drills for people who want to make these gig huge rigs. It's also going to be a bit about, let's zoom over here, having a little bit of progression in your mining equipment. If you're like me, I like to advance through different techs and have more options when it comes to designing cool vessels. And sadly, mining vehicles all rely on a single block. The only difference is whether or not it's small grid, like this guy right here. Uh, let me just rotate so we're right side up with the ships. These are just the normal standard mining drills or the large grid version of that. Beyond that, that's all you get. I just push this again. There's the large grid version. I am in creative mode right now, so it's easier to spotlight these. There. And that's it. It's just how many of those do you want to slap onto your vehicle? Maybe you stick a rotor on it so it spins, but there's not a whole lot to these. Maybe you want some more variety or at least have some tech, uh, tech levels to go through. And in that vein, we're gonna look at the Bossing Say Tools, the mod that I'm using right now on the Sunday series for my own mining ship, at least until I broke it, and now I don't have the resources to rebuild it. Because yeah, it's a more advanced version of all of the tools that you can slap onto your ship. Here they are here, this is actually the same ship. And what you're seeing is on the right hand side is the Bossing Say version of the welder. And then here is one of its build states. They do have full build states, full survival capability, um, compatibility. They only have one bug that might turn you off to using these. The cool thing about these, though, is that this uh, welder, notice there are four tips to it instead of just two, actually can fire out or weld stuff out to a considerably farther distance, meaning you'll actually start to be building your builds a lot faster using these more advanced tools. If I pull out my welder, though, uh, if I could pull out my... Where's my... What the... Oh, we're in... It. We're, we're in spectator mode. There we go. I've played this game before. I know what I'm doing. If we look at the supply cost for this, let me go ahead and weld it up. It's a bit more expensive, the twin welder. It takes power cells now. It takes superconductors, meaning you're going to need gold now. So you have to get to that level in your in your tech tree before you can make it. And that's true for all of them. They're going to take something special. For the mining drill itself, and this is the one that I've used the most of, um, the superconductors slow you down. Kind of the same requirement for... Um, for for uh for welding and whatnot but what you are gonna miss here and what's a bit different 
is with this, it actually has, I guess not miss, I guess it's a feature. There is a large uh, conveyor port on the drill, unlike the normal vanilla one. So you can hook it up to a large grid, just like the welders the vanilla game. You can hook them up just like that. They've also got two small ports on the side, like a normal traditional drill. Here's one of the build states. They do have two build states per, if I kind of weld that, grind that down. Uh, actually, this one doesn't. This one only has one. Interesting. Go ahead and weld that back up and see if it goes through another build state. It made the sound like it went through a build state, but I didn't see the model change. And then boom, there it is. And then the last one's going to be your grinder, which I think this one is the nicest to have, having a little bit more range with the grinder so you can get through stuff a bit faster and grind them faster. Um, and then you can see its build state there. And then boom, it's online. So bossing state tools are pretty cool. The one bug with this that I have had repeating is that sometimes when you reload a save, they will be invisible. Not all the time, it's it's random, like one out of five times. And you'll have to grind it down and then weld it back up to make the model come back. It's not a huge deal, unless you've got a ton of these installed, but it is a thing that you should know about. So that's one of the mods for having a little bit of progression. Two, well, the Mars-like planet, because I've already got a test bench set up. Whoosh. Oh, no, not Mars, wrong one. Hey, hang on. There it is. Silicon mine. That one. Yep, I know what I'm doing. We'll use our godlike powers to change the time of day so we can get a little bit better of a view going on. There we go. I had to teleport my body over here. Then, oh, this isn't the one either. Let's pull up the most early version of it. There it is. All right, so these are static drills. The way these work is you find a place that you want to build them, put them on the level of the voxel, like so. Give them a place to put their ore. In this case, we'll put a, uh, a pipe in just so we can have a little bit of separation. Let's put a cargo container on this. And then we need to give it a little bit of juice so that we can run the mining tool. And there, look at how cool that is. It actually looks like some kind of blender. But what this is going to do is it's actually going to generate ore based on whatever it's sitting on. And it's not going to damage the voxels. Of course, all the mods we're talking about are in the description below. This one is the Resource Nodes by Math0424. All right, let me go ahead and turn it on so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Control panel, base static drill. It is super simple. I mean, there's no buttons to it or anything. It literally just starts mining. I turn it on. You can hear the ore mining. Let me turn that down. It eventually animates. It blinks green. lets you know that it's actually doing the work and it's going to start cutting into it. Now, I'm actually not sure what it's going to mine here because it's on two different resources. We're on an ice field. We're also above a silicon patch. So it may mine one or the other and it may not know which one to mine. If we check it out now, we are mining up some ice. Now, the cool thing about this one is it's not going to damage the voxels. Why is this great? Well, it's great because it won't hurt the server. It won't slow your game down. It won't bloat your save either because a lot of saves get really huge as you make changes to the voxels. Each one of those changes is saved in a text file. That text file will get larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. How cool is that? And then you can just leave. So you get this whole system rigged up. It's going to start using up power. This is the basic version, by the way. There are a few more in the list. And then you come back to that base far off wherever and pick up that ore or the refinement thereof if you've got refining set up at the base that you've got going on. So the other versions of it is going to be a fun experiment because I have not tried these out. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab up a... Um, let's grab up a bunch of blocks just right off the side of this. That way they can be one single grid and see what we're getting into here. Now, I've already put them on my bar. Here is the one that we've got, the basic drill. We've also got an advanced static drill, which I bet you this one lets us choose what we mine. And lastly, we've got just this like weird regular static drill. So it looks like there's two different or three different tech versions of it. For this one, we're gonna just drop right here. Once again, level with the voxels on the ground. Let's see if this has any other features. It may just mine more faster and use more power, which is what I think it actually does. Yeah, same deal. We turn it on. Oh, that's cool. If you're playing something like Agrius, where you've got an actual map, a 3D map of the planet off, I mean, offered to you by Captain Arthur, and you've got limited locations where there's ore, 
and the ore patches are so big you're never going to actually mine them all anyways this could be a great way to focus more on the combat aspect of fighting over that territory than sitting around mining all day if you're not into mining it looks like you're actually like hitting these pipes into the ground to get down to that lower section let's see what it's actually mining up i bet you it's ice it is indeed so it, it what it sounds like to me is if you want to mine something like the silicon you're gonna have to build these not on an ice field but uh, you know what we could do we can build another one of these or we'll just copy pasta this one over directly above the silicon just to make sure let's see what it does and we'll check the drill itself. How what's the cargo space? 4,000 cargo space in the drill itself. And look at how slowly it's mining. Now, what? how kind of power draw are we talking about? 648 kilowatts compared to something like a small nuclear reactor. We'll pull one of those up as well. I never remember the stats on these. Well, how many kilowatts do you produce at max? Oh, 15 megawatts. All right, so yeah, it's not crazy in the way of, of, of power consumption. I mean, that is a nuclear reactor. Uh, and if you're playing an aggressive war scenario, you're not going to have access to uranium right away. So you're going to be powering this off of alternatives. Um, so that could be a fun challenge to get a bunch of these set up and rigged. Very cool. Add the pipe mod into this so you can run these back to a, to a central location. And you've got yourself your own little like RTS style uh, resource gathering. Very, very cool. But that's not the only auto drilling system that we've got access to. Let me go ahead and turn this off. I actually prefer that sound over the vanilla grinding sound because I probably have heard it for so many years. Let's go ahead and turn you off. And oh, well, you know what? Better yet, let's try out the other one. There's still an advanced version we haven't tried. And then we'll go look at one of the other auto miners that are available. I know some of you are like, Shaq, you've got to try the old school one. Um, so what we're going to do is just rotate this it's got two ports on the back to help you set this up with your industry i like the model too we should see what kind of color uh colorization this takes let's switch this over to like a like a safety industrial yellow oh wow really huh it only colored the stripes on it weirdly fitting that i chose yellow because the stripes are actually safety stripes let's go over here and do the same thing to uh to the, the easier one the light one uh all right that one kind of takes up a two-tone as well uh, let's go ahead and delete that so it stops mining. Running over here. I'm guessing you have a better range and a better mining speed at the cost of power. Flick it on. Whoa! What? Oh, that is cool. Yeah, well, we didn't check, and I, I feel silly now. What's the resource cost on this? Metal grids. Steel plates, metal grids, construction components. It's mostly just steel with a bit of cobalt. That's actually not terrible. Even for the uh, the advanced version of it. Place this drill atop an ore deposit and power it to start mining the ore. Indeed. And right now it thinks that it's supposed to be mining ice because I have it over ice. and It probably ignores stone. I mean, it has to. And mines the traditional, uh, traditional spots. That's very, very cool. Uh, what was the cost for the medium version? Uh, no cobalt required. You could start out making one of these guys. And then for the cheapest version, and we'll just go ahead and pull that back up, you're going to be uh, still the same thing. This would literally be the thing you would start with. It'd be like building a normal drill. Um, it's all just iron. Yeah, it's all steel plates, except for a little bit of nickel, but nothing that you can't get out of stone in small quantities for, like, a starting out for a survival kit. Very, very cool. Awesome. For those who don't like mining in the traditional sense, you can totally just set these guys up and it'll do it for you. I love that this is... Ah, that's cool. All right. Could you imagine having a few of these? You could probably get them putting out a beat if you rode them and timed them just right. Oh, wait, moving on to another static miner. Now, maybe you're like, well, that's cheats, Shaq. I play on a, at an area where the, the ore is, is not plentiful. It's got very small veins, and part of the challenge is setting up and mining that little bit of ore um, and then moving on. We're, we're st we have to stay mobile. Maybe I'm, I have a mobile base, and that's my whole shtick, and I love having the voxels get get changed as I go. Well, there is a auto miner that will eat voxels. You can already see it right here, and it's not OP. It's not broken, because it'll actually mine quite slowly. It just does it all the time. It doesn't require your attention, and that would be this guy right here. In-game, it is called the auto miner version 2. That's actually what it's called over on the Steam Workshop. I've already got it set up. You just plop it down. I'll show you the coloration of it real quick as I turn it yellow. 
not too bad. It does have a light at the top that'll tell you what its current status is, and right now its current status is ignored because it's not turned on. Go in here, it's already done a little bit of mining. If I go to the control panel, auto miner, uh, this one actually has a bunch of settings you can change. Now, if I, well, it's already turned on, show area. Uh, if I show area, let me do it again. Make sure that's turned on. Auto miner, show area. Go ahead and turn it on. And I hit stop so it doesn't run. And I walk away from it. And let me clear the weather right now so you guys can see that a little bit better. Weather. Uh, no, not economy. Weather. Remove weather. There, that's so much better. You can see the area, and you can adjust this area. It's important, though, because it's going to actually change the voxel. So you don't want to end up, you know, gutting the bottom of whatever's holding up your base with this thing. But you can change it with height and the depth below it. So you can put this on the surface and then mine a particular ore, literally eating the voxels, somewhere below this. So if you want to dig tunnels and you only want to mine the ore out of that tunnel, the or the uh, the iron out of that tunnel, for example, you could do it with this tool. You could also put it, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I believe it's got a small grid. No, it doesn't have a small grid version. It is only a large grid. Never mind. Right, let's pop up here. Let's go to the control panel. Let's set this thing to mine some ice. So we're going to leave the radius as it is. Uh, we have a drop down menu for what? It can only mine one thing at a time. We're going to set it to ice because that's what we're nearby. And and I didn't actually put it near enough to the silicon to mine the silicon, but you can see where we're going to go. You set everything where you want it. You can do offsets if you want to. Like I said, if you want to drill like a tunnel somewhere uh, and you can set it so you can see it. We'll turn the area off on it. Uh, you know, I'll turn it back on so you can see where, where it starts mining. We'll hit start. All right, now that it's started up, the light has turned green. I love that it's got like an error readout for you. You got to glance, see what it's doing. If it's green, it means it's actually mining. It's eating those voxels right there behind it. If you see it yellow, it means that um, it is, it's ready, but it's off, I believe. If it's blinking yellow, it means the cargo bay is full. All the information, and I might be slightly off on one of those. I, I, I'm not sure about the solid yellow color. Um, I think maybe it's red if it's turned off. Or no, red is out of power. But there you go. That's what it does. And this one is the quietest of the bunch. There's no sound to it. You just slowly see the voxels disappear. Also, notice how slowly those voxels are disappearing. It does not completely replace someone using a drill if you've only got one of them. I believe it takes two of these to keep a hydrogen oxygen generator running at full capacity to give you an idea. So you'd have like, if you really wanted a lot of ore coming in using this, you'd have a field of them. You'd have like a, like a cluster of them running if you wanted to bring a lot in. But how cool is that? It's kind of like having a build and repair system. It's just it's one more some person with a mining tool out there working so you don't have to do the boring stuff, particularly if you're not playing multiplayer. Very, very cool. Uh, the cost on this, by the way, is going to be fairly cheap except for the detector components that's the rarest of the resources to pick up so you're not going to be able to make this in a survival kit right away you have to work your way up to this all right moving on to the next auto miner and i'm going to put this one way over here because this one might have an audio issue but i should bring it up because it is a thing um, that people have seen and uh, on the workshop for the last few years, and it is the drilling platforms. Now, this is one of the few versions of this mod. This is the uh, ore and ice version. They're set up specifically to, or, excuse me, stone and ice version. This is for large amounts, and I wasn't going to spotlight this one because in my experience, it's had some issues, but I know people are going to ask about it, so I'm going to put it in. What does it do? Well, it does kind of what those other mods do. It just sits here and it, it mines whatever it's on it. I've given it some power. You can see it's got a cool little animation beam there. It does not change the actual voxels. It kind of just generates ore as it goes. My issue with this one is when I go into here, it's already generated 36,000 gravel and 2K of dense stone. Notice it's on ice. That's because I put the stone version down. It doesn't seem to care what it's currently set on. If I go back to it and I pull up the other one, uh, what menu did I put you under? Playing that game. Uh, 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 literally just had you in my hand. Ice drill. Ah, ice drill. That's the one we wanted. Ice drill. And then give it some power. And it is there. It's, it's now mining. And if I look into it, it is mining. But it's mining incredibly fast. We're talking hundreds of ice a second. Right? And yeah, like that's pretty quick. It's already up to 1.6K. 
Um, for some reason, the, the gravel one seems to pull thousands. I guess the ice isn't nearly as, as ridiculous. It also is dense ice, so this will actually be able to, if you go to production, uh, you can turn it into normal ice, which is a bit of a weird thing. Like, holy crap, that's 108k of ice. So what does it cost to have this ridiculous level of, of ore generation that might be a little OP in this version? Um, wow, it's pretty much free for what you're getting. It's a thousand steel plates. So this one's balance, you know, has kind of a question mark to it. It does have a sound effect. It's just this kind of like really low hum. But there you go. And you can tell that it's been, it's got some colorization to it. I can paint it that color, but the texture is a little dull. There's the last of the auto mining bits and pieces. So that is not all for today. We do have a few more mods to talk about. Uh, one is going to be another set of small tools. And before we get into that, I want to talk about this. All right, for the next mod we're going to look at, uh, oops, I just teleported over. Where's my, where's my, eh, nope, that's not it. That's not it. We're going to look at something that isn't a drill. It's not to help you mine. It's to help you carry more when you mine. Now, one of the problems that I have in SC, particularly with small grid mining vehicles and industrial vehicles, is they lack in vanilla more than just drill cargo space and connectors or conveyors in between them, right? I want some technology and I want to think about what I'm putting on my ship a little bit more and I want to have some options. Well, one of those options, if you go modded, is the ore compactor mod. This does exactly what it says on the tin. It takes the ore and like an old garbage truck, crushes it into cubes, getting rid of all of the voids, meaning your cargo space in your ship can go for longer. You can take more with you if you're willing to add this extra step. Now I've already attached this on here uh, and its cost is not terrible. It's got 30 metal grids is gonna be your rarest of the resources. So you're gonna be needing cobalt for this, meaning you can't do it with a survival kit. Everything else though is iron required or uh, silicon with the computers. We pop that out, we take a look at this. I'll even color it real quick so you can see what you can do with it. Let's paint it yellow. There you go, a nice two-tone to it. You've got three access points here, here, and here, a control panel at the top, and a large access point on the back end, which I've hooked up to the rest of the grid. If we go inside it, we can see it's just on and off, use conveyor system, all pretty straightforward. Do a little mining and give it a test. Block tools, bump, ba -dump up. It's a hydrogen miner with the boss sing say tools attached to it. We do have some all, more small grid mining tools. Um, oh, there you go. You can hear it running up. It has the refinery sound effect. Whoops. I think I'm running out of hydrogen or I've managed to somehow disconnect my rear thrusters, weirdly enough. Let's see if we just need to do a restart. Sometimes you do. No, I must've damaged something. Yeah, I've lost my braking thrust as well. Anyways, it's doing its job. If we go under I, and we go under inventory and the ship inventory, get rid of all the hidden inventories. You can see it's taking the stone from the drills and it's immediately converting them into compressed stone. If we go over there, I can actually pull some of it out. I love that this is a thing because once you bring it back to base, you can uncompress the stone. Well, uh, we'll just stick it in our inventory and then drop it out here. And it's just labeled, it just looks like a rock marked stone on it. Like somebody put a sticky note on it. And that means you don't, you either can add more cargo space to your ship or you can add a compressor and let it do its job. One more option for you guys out there for your mining ships. All right, let's look at, boop, boop. Now, something that I didn't mention is the ratio. So the ratio on the, the compressor is 50%, meaning it's gonna, the actual individual items are twice as heavy than normal ore. But of course, when you refine them, stick them in a refinery, they'll turn into their base resource whatever you're refining them into at twice the rate. So you're you're getting the same amount of ore and resource, but you get to carry more back with you. Actually kind of reminds me of an Orca in EVE Online, if anybody's ever played that, uh, with those old industrial ships, uh, or a Rockwell had kind of that ability. It could just hold more ore because it could compress it. All right, let's look at the new and different drills for more options. Okay, development. Now, this one I haven't used in quite a few years, but it's also really awesome. We're gonna grab all these. It is all the sets of tools that you would think of. Uh, it even has gigantic grinders in large grid and small grid variety. We're only gonna look at the small grid for this one. 
Um, because oh, there's just not enough tools for small grids. Uh, yeah, that isn't actually going to fit on this ship. I'm going to get a little crazy with it. And I'm literally going to just slap it to the front of this. Uh, it does look like it belongs in Space Engineers because it's literally a kit bash in Space Engineers. A huge disc strapped to what looks like the base of a turret, but surprisingly kind of works. I could totally see making a, uh, a grinder pit with like two of these as the main ones and then a bunch of small ones or maybe a bossing say one surrounding it. So there's your grinder cost on these, by the way. You imagine that the grinding area on this is going to be huge. We'll test out distance in just a second. Uh, fresh salvage ship. Here you go. It even has that like physics hit when the when the uh, vehicles get uh, small enough in the way of uh, mass, they get kind of chucked. What was that? A whole small grid ship in like 20 seconds? <laughs> cool. I'm just gonna let the rest of it float away while we pop out. Then we can look in here. The cargo space inside. How much can you actually hold? Uh, wait. Excuse me. Where's the Excuse me, where's your ore, my friend? Not uh, ore, where's your where's your components? So this is actually a known issue. The grinder at the moment doesn't actually return items. It's called the shipbreaker, by the way, which is a fantastic name for it. But yeah, it's currently not returning items. There is a few reports over on the uh, on the mod. Oh, interesting. So the shipbreaker is just designed to cut through ships in seconds. The grinder, though. Okay, this one in the description says that it is designed for returning capital ship scrap. I'm going to put some power. Probably want to put some more power on it. I'm going to flip it on, and let's just see how she goes. All right, so access here. Wait, what do you cost for one thing? You've got to be expensive. Uh, 1,500 plates, 200 steel plates. It's kind of silly cheap, to be honest. Turn it on. Oh, Woo. whoa, okay, it's literally just detonating everything. Let's not get too close to the front of that. Did you manage to actually get anything from that? As it floats away from its own impact. No, it got nothing from that. Okay, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that one. This may be a mod that we'll have to, to, to revisit later on down the line. Let's just go ahead and delete the giant doom spinning wheel death and move on to the next ore mod, which honestly, is one of my favorite mods for just generally speeding up the gameplay of finding the resources that we're looking for. The Draugr Mining Ship. There it is. This is what we've been using as our default one today. Uh, what we're going to add to this, actually, we don't need to add anything to this. It's perfect. It already has an ore detector at the top. That's what you're going to need for this because the mod that we're going to be looking at is, if we look at the screen below, and I've used this in the Sunday series already and the, uh, the Friday series, the Noob series, Actually, what we'll do is we'll put this at the top center screen and we'll try again. Okay, this isn't weirdly, this is not the best cockpit for this because the LCDs are so small. It might be worthwhile to put an LCD outside the ship so you can see what you're reading. But if you look at the top, and I'll zoom in in the edit, if you look at the top, you see there is a waveform. And what we're getting is our ore detector wherever it points, and it's directly above us. It's currently aiming at this asteroid right here. Uh, it is giving us a waveform as if it's sending out a signal, it's bouncing off the asteroid, coming back to us, and then the frequency of that signal, it actually gives us an idea of what that rock is made out of. And what we're getting is here, we've got, looks like a bunch of potentially magnesium. Oh, wait a minute, it just changed, it just updated. Okay, we've got a lot of spikes, we've got... What I'm guessing is ice, looking at the spikes, maybe. Sometimes it helps if you put a camera on it. That way you can aim the camera directly at the target. Let's slap a camera up here. Uh, or maybe right above it so we can get pretty close. There we go. Pretty much lined up. Slap the camera here, go to view. And if we switch the camera on, now we've got an aiming reticule and we can say, all right, before I fly 40 kilometers out, what I wanna do is aim at you you asteroid out there. Stare at it for a second, give it a little time, switch back, and if we keep an eye on our screen at the top, it's probably already updated. Uh, we are looking at, uh, based on our scans, oh, there's the update. Um, those spikes, putting down the list below it, they're lining up perfectly with ice. So that on that asteroid, it's mostly made of ice. 
There may be more ores on there. We may see it update again. Um, but we definitely know that there's probably some ice there. Uh, the next update gave us nothing. Oh, it's not updating because it's showing us new ores. It's updating to show us the rest of the list because there's so many different types of ores in Space Engineers. Uh, but yeah, definitely we've identified some ice. Let's do one more. So if I switch back over to the camera, we'll zoom back out and we'll look over at this one. What do we got here? Oh, eh, arp, arp, arp. all right, focus it. There we go. And then we're looking to line up all of those dashes with our spikes. Uh, nothing really lines up on the screen just yet. There we go. Really? Stone? No. Yeah, no, there's definitely stone, but there's something else there. We've got two other spikes that are not accounted for. And you got to kind of figure it out yourself in which one. And you can make mistakes. It's actually quite easy. And then you've got to make, you know, your best guess and pick out where you're going to go and then shoot off that direction and confirm it with your aura detector. But yeah, I love this mod. It's just one more element to scanning. And it means that you're not going to spend half of your gaming session with your friends trying to find that one rock. Another mod that goes really great for the industrial side of things, especially if you've got a, a, a very small inside base that you've got to dock into, is the camera... There we go, the camera panning mod. You can't normally do this in Space Engineers. If you've got the camera panning mod, you hold Alt, you can move it around, you can zoom in and out. It even gives you the degrees and stuff. And then if you want to reset it, all you've got to do is hit the right button that I can never remember. There we go, V will reset your camera. So you look over here. Okay, what is that pirate doing? Uh, that pirate is uh, sitting there being annoying, hooked to an asteroid. Cool, let's recenter. I wonder what that pirate's actually mining over there. Let's find out because it looks like he's got a mining base we'll line up on it best we can hit f give it a second it'll update definitely there is stone wow what a crappy <laughs> what a crappy asteroid to be set up on an abandoned base that pirates have taken over very cool very cool let me think are there any more mods that we haven't talked about that i've had in my great list of mods compressor oh deep ores I'm going to put this as a link. You don't really need me to spotlight it for you. It makes all the ores that spawn in your world be far underground. Why would you want this? Because where there is challenge comes more engineering opportunities. And if you've got to dig super deep into the rock face, and maybe you're playing a challenge mode like I'm playing currently on Sunday, where you can only have thrust in one direction, it means you can't make a box that flies and floats. You're going to have to build a rig to get to that deep ore. And you can make some, end up making some really cool bases and, well, playing around with the voxels. So I recommend it. Check that one out. AQD Deep Ores. Link is in the description. Also, colorful icons. When we zoom through. It actually colors the ore colors with colorful icons. Spawn object. Let's go ahead and pick it up. And we'll look at our inventory and check that out. Act, they're not just um, gray and hard to tell the difference of. So colorful icons is another just kind of quality of life mod that I recommend for your minor uh, that's out there digging the halls. At least they can see all of their sweet collection of ores. Another quick and easy mod that I can't help but recommend if you love to make tunnels, mine like on gravity uh, areas, you want to actually dig down and, and uh, make it space that you can walk around in and you can see what's going on without having to put a grid down there, is the small static grid. It's one that I've spotlighted before. If I look up batteries here, we'll pull up a single small battery um, and I'll place it right here. Say you've dug a deep mine and you want to make it a little bit uh, safer to walk around in, but you don't want to build an entire grid inside. What you can do is you can just run around and you can build these now just like you would build large grids. You can make them a static grid by putting them in the voxel, in the walls of the cave. And then whatever you want to attach to them, like for instance, if I want to have a... Uh, a warning light or just a traditional light or even a spotlight on it. We'll go with just a traditional light for this. Um, so people coming into the cave can see what they're doing there. And that'll last for a really long time before it runs out of power. We're talking, you know, weeks of real time, most likely, before it runs out of juice on a 30% charged battery. I think this is really cool. And it makes the cave networks just seem much more alive and feel like a place that people are working in as you drive your mining vehicles in and out of them. It's something that we're doing on the Sunday series right now. All right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this look at mining mods. I could probably do a whole nother video of more mods to flesh out that mining and industrial gameplay if that's something you're interested in. One of the mods that we didn't talk about was Drill and Fill. It's another one of the auto miners that kind of works like um, 
build and repair. It actually goes alongside that one, but I want to save that one for another day uh, because it kind of goes perfect with, with Bob, with build, with build and repair. So we might cover those two together in a long form video uh, with all of their features because it's definitely one of those mods that deserves it. All right, if you have any favorite industrial mods, particularly in mining related, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Maybe we'll add them into the next spotlight. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more sci-fi gaming and modding goodness. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Whee!